Before we start to build our own carpenter bee trap, I thought I'd take a look at one of the commercially available bee traps. This is from bestbeebrothers.com. It's somewhere around $20. Instructions, information, nice little hanging string here, some extra string in there. It's plywood, nice bevels. The top and back are plastic, which looks very thick and durable. And they've got this spring-loaded door mechanism that lets you clean it out. There's a couple of mounting holes on the back. And let's make our own version of this. We're looking for birch plywood, and it looks like they have half sheets of it here for $28. Here we are in the sheet metal aisle, and it looks like these flashing tiles will be perfect for the roof and back of our bee trap. These are all the hand tools that I use to build the bee trap. I also use power tools like the belt sander, the bandsaw, and mostly the table saw. What we're gonna do here is replicate this angled in box shape. These are 45 degree angles in here. We've cut the plywood down. Go ahead and set the saw to 45 degrees. We're gonna cut our middle piece, that's the uh, front of the box, and we're gonna put a 45 degree opposite bevel on the other side and mark off five inches here. We need to tilt our blade again. Line it up. If you notice the front of this, the way this is tapered, creates a, a couple of difficult angles. So I've marked out the width at the bottom of this. Trying to actually measure the number of the angle is not as useful as physically checking the angle here so that you can actually replicate it directly onto the piece you're trying to cut. I want to leave a little bit of extra beyond the height of the actual box because what we're going to do is fasten the sides all together and then we're just going to cut it off to get a nice even cut. This also needs to be at a 45. What we're going to do is go to 12 on our other side here because the blade tilts this way, we have to cut it that way so that it's tilted the correct way. So back to 45 degrees we go. Now we'll flip it and do this other side. Go 12 degrees the other way. We're just gonna come in as close to that corner as we can get. a little long. This is actually our cutoff line, if you can see that faint line there. One thing I noticed about this design is the side of the box is not exactly square. It's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. I have it cut at the width here, but we need to narrow it down this way. And that's our angle. We're sitting flat on top of this, which is just parallel to the, the cutoff area. And then we've matched this blade right along the front there. That's our angle right there. What we probably want to do first is get this cut off to a reasonable length. It looks like it's only about five and a half. We'll just start right at this corner and take that right off. And there you can see our tapered shape with the bevel and level on both ends and on the back. So if this is the side piece, it's gonna be like that. This is the front. One of the easier ways to get this piece mirrored is just lay the correct piece on here, line it up with a straight edge, in this case the tabletop. I'm going to mark exactly where it's a mirror image of the other piece. And I'm going to cut it off go back to our five and a half degrees. I'm gonna cut off most of this on the bandsaw. So we've cut this piece down and we're trying to match this width, but we're actually gonna take it off the beveled side and not this side, because it's much easier to have this against the fence and then just trim this down. 
Now we've got our two sides, exact mirrors of each other. This is our front piece, the inside of our front piece. These pieces are gonna get glued and nailed. What we're gonna do now is mark off some areas and pre-drill some holes for some small finished nails that we're gonna use to hold the thing together while the glue dries. Now we're going to use our hand drill here and drill perpendicular. We got our nails here. We want to put nails in the front here. We're going to use a jar with a metal lid. We're going to need to give it a surface in here for this thing to attach to. So we'll mark it. Squeeze it right in there. So we're gonna let that dry. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put nails in that or not. It seems to be a good fit without them. Next, I wanna figure out what the angle is on these holes. The safest way to do it is gonna be on the drill press. I've already marked that angle off on a piece of scrap four by four. What we're gonna do is cut this out here and this piece will sit in it like that. We're gonna do this on the bandsaw. This is the piece we cut out, the little cradle piece that sits the box at the right angle. It wasn't quite wide enough to account for the opening on the other side, so I put a flat piece of wood in here and a little flat piece for the back. The largest round bit I have is a half inch, so I'm going for this 9 16th spade bit. Now the blue tape is to prevent breakout of the wood. We've got our piece here with our wood insert to support the inside when we drill it. And what we're gonna use is this hole saw. We're good. Now we're gonna use the same hole saw to cut the hole in the bottom. We're going to attach the lid with the hole in it to the base. We've got our sheet of galvanized metal from the hardware store. We're going to leave it as one sheet and bend it so that it covers both the top and the back. I've clamped on this piece to hold down the sheet metal and then I've clamped another piece with a bevel. Let's see what happens. That looks pretty good. Let's take this off. A piece there. We'll hammer this out and that should tighten up that, that bend. I've marked where I want to cut off this sheet.
our metal roof all ready to go here. So I've traced the outline of the trap against the metal. So you can... I'm gonna pre-drill these. I'll do the other side here. We are going to put a screw eye in there. Should be pretty snug. And that looks like it's just right. Now we are going to put this top part on. We're gonna use these large finish nails. We may need to put pilot holes. And there we have it. There's our homemade bee trap. We're gonna hang it up in the yard and see how it does.